Okay, first, I'd like to thank the grace of heaven, virtues of masters, <coughs> and mercy and compassion of our grand predecessor, predecessors, transmitters, temple masters, uh, giving me this opportunity to uh, talk about today's topic, which is chapter one of the classic of the Tao, or the way and the virtue, okay? Yes. Classic, so, you know, it, it, yeah, it's, even though the direct translation, you can say it's a sutra, but the, the reason why it's a sutra was because, uh, there's a little background, I, I'm already late, but uh, am I recording? Yeah, okay. Uh, it's that, I think, in the Tang, Tang Dynasty, yeah, this is recorded, okay? The emperor, uh, one of the emperor, he's very, um, how can I say, I don't say religious, but, 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 but he, he was an ardent believer, if you will, or supporter of this, you know, this, 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 uh, this philosophy, you can say, of the Tao. So he, 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 uh, he granted, or he gave posthumously, right? Gave Lao Tzu a, like, a, a honored title, you know, and, 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 and honored his classic or his, you know, a, as a canon, get it? Sutra, canon, okay, same thing, okay? All right, uh, I think uh, I read someplace, uh, I think you can look it up on the internet, Th this is kind of background, okay? I, I, I wanna jump deep in, but, but, but let me just give you a little bit of background. The Tao Te Ching is probably the second most translated classic in the world, you know that? Behind the Bible, supposedly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, um, yeah. No, I think it's the most, most um, so it's sold more copies than anything. But the Bible was sold more copies, but that's the most printed book. Something like that. Yeah, but also I think it means this, it's also the second most translated. translated. Yeah, it, because it's translated to many languages, just just like the Bible, right? The Bible has been translated to maybe I don't know probably 200 languages, you know, a lot. And the, and, 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 and the Tao Te Ching is the second, okay? Anyway, so it just proves that it's very, its message or its, its uh, yeah, you can say its theme, its ideas, its concepts, its teachings, if you will, are, you know, kind of universal, right? Okay, all right. And so the Tao Te Ching is, is um, um, it, it's composed of roughly, they say, about five thousand plus, a little over five thousand words. Now, uh, I know, you know, we could each pull a book, and every one of us could, you know, count the number of Chinese characters for each chapter, roughly eighty-one chapters. Okay, and it's in two parts or two, yeah, sections. One is the Tao, section one, chapters one to thirty-seven, roughly. Yeah, and then the second one is the De, or you can say virtue. You know, which is the direct translation. For, for, we'll talk about its meaning later, you know, down the road. But uh, uh, it, it, it's composed of uh, 30, chapters 38 to, uh, to uh, 81. <laughs> okay? And, and actually, in this case, the represents, you can say, since we're talking about chapter 1, right? It's, you can say it's a function or manifestation of this essence or the Tao. Get it? I mean, that, that, that's, that's the more high level, you know, overall uh, 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 perspective, if you will, okay, all right, okay, that's the overarching, maybe theme, maybe that's a better way, okay, so, okay, so that's it, okay, so, uh, let's see, what else should I say, yeah, so this book was, you know, historically, one of the uh, great, you know, the, 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 the Chinese, uh, Sima Qian, the Chinese um, uh, Han, uh, you can say, historian, you know, he's called the, you know, the, the imperial historian, and uh, he, he recorded, okay, the story of, of how Lao Tzu came to write this, this, this classic or this, yeah, you know, when he, you know, I, you, know you guys can, can look it up, okay, I don't want to go into too much detail, but, and, th and that's how it came into being, okay, all right, anyway, okay, so, as he was, you know, as Lao Tzu was leaving, you know, because Lao Tzu, oh, yeah, let me give you a little bit of background, which is, Lao Tzu was roughly born 571 BC, roughly, roughly, about roughly, 20 years before Confucius, you know that? 20 years before Confucius, and 27 years before Buddha, Siddhartha, okay? All right, so, so remember, Lao Tzu was also considered one of our patriarchs, right? Remember? Right, remember the lineage of uh, the heritage of Tao, the, you know, lineage of the mandate of heaven. So he was near towards the end of the what? The green and the uh, red, 
Ah, uh, green. Sorry, green, green period, and the beginning of the red. You can say that. Ah, uh, yeah, okay, roughly uh, in that, that transition. Okay, so, so all right. Okay, so anyway. Okay, so okay. Let, let's go into. Let's dive into the the first um, chapter, chapter one. Now in Chinese, it's called Guan Miao Zhang, right? Chapter on. Okay, so what's Guan Miao? <laughs> Guan literally means observe to see. You know, or you can say, yeah, 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 to see. And then meow. Meow is something that's mysterious, marvelous, excellent, all that. It has many, many meanings. Profoundness, you can say that. Okay, so so that's why I say observe. You know, I put in parentheses. If you want to do literal, right? Perf- observing marvelousness or profundity or, okay, I mean, so. But what it means is, you know, and to make it more meaningful, it's really to embody the essence of the Tao. Get it? Okay, so so that's what it means. Okay, the embodiment of the da or the essence. Okay, right, so that's chapter one. So so already from this first beginning chapter, it's already at a very very you can say the highest level. Get it? It's it so so Lao Tzu is approaching it from the highest level. Get it? Okay, from the you can say from the uh, principal perspective or very abstract. Okay. Now from a previous class. You know, Jean talked about uh, Confucius's, um, you know, uh, uh, major teachings like the five relationships, et cetera, et cetera, right? The, uh, sorry, not, not, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, the five relationships and the, and the uh, five um, constants, right? Now, Confucius was approaching it from where? From within phenomena, i.e. within human realm perspective. Get it? So, so that's why a lot of Confucius is... Uh, like words, like when we talk about the propriety, the word for propriety, use the word propriety as opposed to using the word principle or essence, you know, that, you know? Because Confucius was talking from the human level, from the practical level, from the application level. Make sense? Whereas Lao Tzu, just from this first chapter, really throughout the whole, 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 whole canon, whole classic, he's approaching it from the, you can say, from the uh, 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 absolute view, or, or you know, or the non-phenomenal view. Okay, even when he's talking about the function. Okay, so you can say it's very, how can I say? It's very ideal, very abstract. Makes sense, and it's very high level. That's why, if you compare, if you re, you know, let's say Lao Tzu's Tao, this this text, this uh, classic, and and read Confucius' four books, it's like night and day, right? One is like. My God, it's so ideal, so abstract, so you know, perfect. You now everything's wow, everything is you know, perfect and and and, and awesome, etc. Marvelous, you know. Whereas Confucius is talking about like, like you know, very mundane things. Make sense? So on the surface, they conflict. You say a lot of scholars, right? Say, oh, you know, you know, Lao Tzu, you know, you know, the Lao Tzu uh, 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 criticize. Confucius' teachings and vice versa. That's because they're only looking at the surface and they don't understand that they're looking at from looking at the Tao, if you will, from different perspectives. Make sense? Okay, so so now you know all this. I, I only have 30 minutes, so I'm gonna go through very quick, okay? So so here, uh, this is in Chinese, so for those of you who can read Chinese, because I have to preserve Chinese because it it, it maintains, you can say, the integrity and the the completeness. Of, of the meaning, okay? So, 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 it's only six, well, depends on how, generally speaking, it's only six sentences, we can say, okay? So, this is the first, second, third, fourth, five, six, okay? All right? And then, and then, I, I translate the English, we can, we can you read, and, and I have, you know, the numbers be, in parentheses behind, which is in the later section that gives you the comments, you know? Com- so, so, comments one and two, or explain, it's talking about the first, you know, explaining the first sentence. Get it? Okay. Okay. So that's how I have it. Okay. So basically, you know, I'm using this translation now. Don't. And I'll explain it later. Okay. Because you know, sometimes choice of words is very difficult. It's very difficult to translate, unfortunately. Because oh, another thing is, you know, given that it's only five thousand, the whole canon is roughly five thousand words or so. Five, some say five thousand two hundred eighty to be exact, but it's roughly five thousand plus, a little over. Lao Tzu does not, it's not verbose. <laughs> that means he's not wordy. Whereas look at Confucius. My God, four books. It's, 
How many words? Quite a few, <laughs> quite a lot. I would say probably what, hundred thousand words at least, right? A lot of words. You, I mean, I mean, well, well, well. Analex is com- actual Confucius teach, and the other three were his disciples. Analex alone, I think, has like how many chapters? I forgot. But each chapter is very long, right? So anyway, doesn't matter. Oh, or section. They have sections. Okay, it doesn't matter. So, so that's why, because Lao Tzu use very few words to describe something that's so marvelous, i.e. the Tao. So therefore, it's very difficult to translate or, or you know, to translate the, the, his term, his Chinese terms perfectly. Make sense? Okay, so now let's just say the Tao that can be spoken is not the eternal Tao. The name that can be named is not the eternal name. I mean, that, that's just trying to, Emptiness or non-existence is named or called the origin of heaven and earth. Existence is named or called the mother of merit things. Thus, always in emptiness, without desire, one sees its essence. Always in existence, with desire, one sees its manifestations. Literally, the word jiao means fringe, boundary, or you know, limitations. You know, there's a limit that we can, you know, in manifestation, manifestation, right? Whatever manifest has its own has its limitations. That's why it's relative, anyway. Okay, it's not absolute. Then those two merge, but together, but differ in name. They have many different names. Okay, and the unity or that one is called the mystery, and mystery of mysteries, the door to all wonders. Okay, so let's explain. The first sentence, Tao Ke Tao, right? The first word, the Tao, the first word, the Tao, means the essence or Banti. Okay, the essence. You can say the absolute principle, all that. Okay, all right, or Dharma Datu. Yeah, it's a Dharma Datu. I think that's the, 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 the equivalent in Buddhism. So the essence is beyond thoughts or words. You can say it's bukasi or unimaginable and indescribable. That's, the, that's what he meant, okay, that this first Tao. And it transcends all for now objects, etc., etc. Okay, okay, all right. So that's the first word Tao, okay. Then the second term, ke Tao, or the second Tao, means something that could be spoken or described or explained. So that means what? It's its function, something that could be manifested, right, from the first Tao, from the from that bunti or from the essence. Okay, so if you could do, it, if we could describe this Tao, it's no longer the essence. Get it or the true? Okay, it just it's it just is what its function, its application. Okay, so any Tao that can no could be so no longer constant and changeable. Think about it. Functions, applications are what. Endless, countless. They always, right? They can always adapt or change, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, right? Right? Okay. So it's, that's the true Tao. So that's what the Tao Ke Tao means. Fei Chang Tao. Okay. Let's go to the sec, uh, second sentence, which is Ming Ke Ming Fei Chang Ming. So the first Ming, first word Ming, refers to what? That nameless Buddha nature. We call it Buddha nature, but it doesn't have a name. Buddha nature is just a description. It's only a description, a label. It's the essence that is neither created nor, and it's indestructible. So, 不生不灭, the fu xing, okay? So, this essence has no name, no label. It's just the essence, okay? You say that, okay? All right. Then the second mean, right? Mean ke mean, refers to labels that used to describe that essence, right? Or Buddha nature. So, we say Buddha nature, etc. okay? Okay, so everything in this material realm has a name, has a label, right? And it changes, right? It's, it's changing, right? It always changes, right? Okay, in other words, it's not a permanent, right? Or it doesn't, ex- it's not eternal, okay? So labels are temporary and not eternal. For example, just like a name in our life. So in this life, we're giving a name. Now tell me, in the next life, are you going to have the same name? Highly unlikely, <laughs> right? Because who knows? We could be an animal. <laughs> Hello, right? Who knows, right? Previous life, do we have the same name? Obviously not, right? So same idea, get it? Okay, so that, that's just a label, okay? It's a label for the essence, and it's not its eternal or true name, okay? So that's why, ming ke ming, fei chang ming, okay? All right, I'm, I'm brushing along, okay, let's see. Uh, so five is talking about... Oh yeah, okay, the, the, the third sentence, this, okay, this. All right, five and six, okay, I think five and six. No, five, yeah, five and then six, yeah, okay. So five, the first word is u, right? Okay, u, 
it, it means emptiness. You can say it's emptiness or void or non-existence. Or in Buddhist terms, it's what? Sunyata. Right? Sunyata. One of the key, you can say, teachings or uh, principles or themes in the Diamond Sutra, for example. Right? Right? Okay. So, so now, it's interesting. Now, in the, actual, in the tr original text, there are no punctuation marks. You know that? That's the problem. <laughs> so, so, so without punctuation marks, it leads to very, very different interpretations. Because that's the problem with the Chinese characters. Okay? Because every character potentially could be a noun, a verb, an adjective, an adverb, a conjunction, or, or what? Okay, okay, stuff like that, right? So, so I, that's why I purposefully inserted that, 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 that punctuation. Excuse me. Because some people read it as nameless, wu ming. And then it's, then it's called the si, the origin, the source of heaven and earth, or everything. Okay. Uh, that's not, that's kind of, that's kind of, it's not 100% wrong, but it doesn't talk about the essence. Get it? Okay. The essence is this wu, make sense? Because it's indescribable, or absolute truth, you can call it. You get it? So the absolute truth can be called, now in this term, this no longer is a noun, right? If you combine the two originally, uh, sorry, this is a noun and this is a verb, get it? The u is, a, uh, sorry, it's an adjective and this is a verb, uh, noun, get it? So now, if you separate the two, this mean becomes a what? A verb, make sense? Okay, so same thing with the second sentence, I uh, is a second portion, okay? So it's very important. So sometimes it's okay, it's okay. So, so once if you do it this way, if we interpret this way, it makes a lot more sense. It, 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 it flows with the, remember, this is the f first level. He says it's this, and then it comes down. Get it? Okay, so, so you can say this is the most general, most broad, you know, most high level, if you will, and then it comes down to the next level. You can say, oh, okay, that's one of the quality, and then get down, get down. Get it? It goes more specific. So it's going from the highest, broadest, most general, if you will, level or perspective down to the more specific. Get it? Or describing its, its traits or qualities. Okay? All right. Okay. So that's why, uh, well, let's see. Let's go to number five. Okay. So this Wu Ming Jian. Okay. So it's the absolute state. It's the absolute state. It represents, you can say it's Wu Ji. We call it Wu Ji, right? And Wu Ji is what? Absolute. It's, well, I'll, I'll, I'll talk about it. It just means that it's non-conditional, non-dualistic, right? All that, right? Okay, okay. And, and also, you can say it's also like uh, 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 nirvana, neither birth nor death, right? Right, that, that's the same, same idea, okay? So from emptiness, heaven and earth are created or all phenomena are created, okay? Or comes into being, right? into existence. The formless void of it does not oppose any forms. Right? It does not obstruct, it just is, okay? Which are, it's so, so it's like, say, what's that, thusness? Is it called thusness? Okay, anyway, okay, just this. So all, but yet all phenomena are created by our thoughts. Interesting, of, from our essence. Namely, example, the three subtle conceptions emerging from in this emptiness. Make sense? So, so, you know, those of you who study the Buddha nature class, the three conceptions or subtle conceptions are the, yeah, are the, you can say the origin, if you will, of, of thoughts, because that's even before thought, you know that? Okay, anyway, all right, okay, so, all right. And, and then from thought, it just keeps progressing. Okay, anyway, all right, because from thoughts, then you have cleaning or desire, longing, and then attachment, okay, et cetera, et cetera, all right? Okay, all right, okay. Okay, number six, it's, remember, uh, we're talking about, uh, it's the fifth kind, but six is this term, right? It's this, and it's called the mother of everything, of all things, okay? So, yo means existence. That means it's something, a phenomena, uh, something manifested, okay? So, number six, with existence, it's called the mother of all phenomena, which is one. One just means, you know, Everything, everything, all phenomena, okay? Okay, so remember it says Taos. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, I'll, I'll get that. Okay, so all phenomena are thus relative, i.e., what? 
Tai Chi. So from Wu Ji, right, from this, we can say absoluteness, absolute realm, becomes what? Relativeness. Get it? Okay, so that means what? There is such a thing as what? Plus or minus, male, female, light, darkness, uh, long and short, etc., etc. Okay? Everything, okay? And that, and also it has a beginning and end. Beginning and end, remember? Right? A starting and end that are due to what? Conditions that are either present or not present. Make sense? Okay? And then it gives rise to what? Yin and Yang, which is Liang Yi. Okay? That means, and, and this is part of the Yi Jing, okay? Liang Yi means um, opposite, you can say opposite forces or opposite nature yeah opposite forces okay that's another way to say okay so so it's just like saying remember in Lao Tzu later on in the I forgot which chapter it's later chapters he says the Tao gives rise to one right one gives rise to two two gives rise to three or three gives rise to all things it's the same idea okay the one you can say is the Wu Ji the two would be the Tai Chi or Liang Yi sorry okay and it the Liang Yi gives rise to everything, okay? All things, okay? All right. So all phenomena, therefore, is conditioned and changeable, right? Due to conditions that exist and then change, get it? So the conditions are not fixed, make sense? They're like variables or inputs, okay? So they can change. So existence is what? Due to a rising thought, which in turn, okay? That's, that's how existence comes about, okay? Okay. Then the, I'm going to go to the first, second, third, the fourth uh, line. Okay. The fr too bad you can't see the Chinese, but anyway, anyway. Okay. It, the first two words is Chang Wu, right up here. Let, let's just give it to you. So, Gu means therefore, thus, hence. Okay. Hence, so now this follows from the previous, remember the previous line. Okay. So, in, 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 in the Chinese actual text, there's no punctuation, remember? Okay. There's no time. So, some people, uh, view it as it should be Chang Wu Yu. Get it? Ah, so, I don't know how to do it. Chang Wu Yu. I mean, it should be, you know, there's, there's no separation between Wu and Yu. Okay? So, and then same thing with here Chang Yu Yu. So, okay? All right? So, that's a wrong, uh, not a complete interpret, you could say uh, interpretation. All right? Okay? So it should be Chang Wu. That means there's always that essence. Get it? Ben Ti. And then there's always some manifestation. Get it? Okay. So when we have. Uh, okay. Okay. So when we are. Uh, so that's why I translate as always in emptiness. Get it? Okay. One sees the what? Essence. Get it? Miao. Miao. Miao, in this case, would be the essence, just like, remember, I explained in the beginning on the top here, right? Miao, okay, okay, or you can say the Tao, okay, all right, okay, okay, but essence is it's much broader, okay, so where are we? Okay, right here, so, so we observe, or we say we see, okay, you know, we see, okay, or we, we realize that there is this essence, because we are in this, what, absolute or Dharma Datu, right? The Dharma Datu, the Dharma Kaya, they're all the same, right? I mean, you know, they're all self-evident, you can say that. So, for example, it's like we, we, we realize our Buddha nature, okay? All right. Then, similar to the Diamond Sutra, right? In Diamond Sutra, chapter 10, it says, Ying Wu Suo Zhu. That means, it, literally, it means to abide in emptiness, right? We have to be within that absolute state, if you will, okay? All right, that, that Dharma Datu, right? Okay, in that stay in that, yeah, in that realm. We have to re stay in there. That means our Buddha nature, that means we are at one with our Buddha nature. You can say that, okay? So our Buddha nature is eternal, timeless. These are all the absolute qualities, if you will, okay? All right, it's, it's eternal, timeless, changeless, formless, shapeless, non-conditioned, non-attached, unblemished, unperturbed, all right? Okay, all that, okay? All right, then, okay, then the next stanza, uh, the first word is Chang Yo. That means there's always the innate functions are always part of our essence. It's not separated. It's not separated, okay? It's, it's, it's like different sides of a coin, uh, both sides of a coin or two aspects. So I say, 
okay or, or to add, we'll, later on I'll talk about that okay so this w with these innate functions or abilities they allow us to see all the manifest so the jiao right remember is the manifestations okay of the, our essence i.e. all phenomena okay all right so it's the innate functions of our always present similar to what Diamond Sutra said er sen qi xing right okay that yeah, that it's the manifestation of the mind, or the mind gives rise to a thought, or something like that, okay? Or, okay, all right? So, with these innate functions, we're able to observe also our heavenly portal. That's a, they say chow. This is now based on, uh, uh, Liu Jiang also said that, okay, later on, say that. I mean, if you want to be more specific, it, could, it also means, it could also hint at that, okay? All right, hints that, ooh, if we are at one in that, state of with our buddha nature we'll, we'll, we'll see we'll see that we have this portal okay or okay like that all right okay remember that's why he says to carry the cross jesus said that right that mean, that means obviously you have to be an enlightened state right in order to what if you are in the, the uh, buddha nature state right in the state right in accordance with your buddha nature right okay all right so let's go to the hey good I, I'm, I'm i'm rushing i'm sorry it's a lot okay let's go to the last two senses right Okay, last do that. So, which is, okay, bi liang zhe, right? Zi liang zhe, tong zi liang zhe, right? Tong zu er yi ming, tong wei zi xuan, right? Okay, okay. So, liang zhe, what's liang zhe? Two people? No, <laughs> these two aspects, these two qualities, which is what? Right here, I explained it right here. Liang zhe, eh, where is it? Liang zhe, both liang zhe. It's both what? Emptiness or non and existence. Get it? So it's wu and yo, which is from the prior sentence, right? From the prior, from the prior, you know, from the prior line, right? From the prior line, line number three, number three, right? Line number three, right here. Ooh, right here, right here, right? And right here, right? Okay? You can say essence and function. Okay? You can just, just, just simplify. Okay? All right? All right? So, or here, or here, right? Here, and here. Okay, all right? Okay, those two, all right? Okay, so, so, both those emptiness are the same, are really the inseparable, another way to say, same entity, that same, that is, both are two aspects of the Tao, i.e. oneness, make sense, okay? It, you do not separate it, okay? It's, 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 it's that oneness, okay? So our essence is eternal and formless, yet it always has these innate functions. For example, I should say use AG, Buddha nature, divine wisdom, stuff like that, okay? All right, you can say substance and function, okay? But, but from a, you know, because that sounds too clinical, too abstract, substance and function, with substance and function? You know, has no relationship to me. No, within us, we have this Buddha nature, essence that's shapeless, formless, right? All that stuff. But yet, it has this, this wisdom, this innate wisdom. That's that's innate. It's not learned. Get it? Yeah, 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 yeah. Mahaprajna. That's Mahaprajna. Okay. Now, now that we can go in depth about what Mahaprajna encompasses, but that that's outside of this topic. I mean, just let you know because that 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 goes into you. We could uh, go into Platform Sutra, chapter. Is it two on Prajna? Is it chapter two? I think chapter two is talk about wisdom. Okay. Okay, so, so, anyway, all right, so, but just, just let you know that. So, both emptiness, which is Wu, and existence, Yo, are concomitant, a concomitant in essence and function, in the absolute and relative, right? So, one is absolute, one's relative, right? The functions are relative, right? Right? Make sense? Or the uses, application, are relative, right? There's no one function that's, that can do everything, right? There is none, right? It's all relativistic okay so it's concomitant okay I, i'll explain what that means later okay so the essence is formless so we cannot say that there is an existence because we can't see it it's formless it's in a different you can say realm if you will dimension realm okay it's an absolute it's not a relative state right it has no beginning and end remember okay so okay and manifestations of our innate functions are always present remember Right? So we cannot say that there's nothing, there's no existence. So both are concomitant, i.e. coexisting, concurrent, contemporaneous, 
con contemporaneous <laughs> and simultaneous. Okay? So n the whole thing is, in short mix, they are linked. They are not separated. They both, you can say coexist, that's why I say coexist, concurrent, okay? So both emerge together, tong chu, right? They both are, but yet have different names, right? Okay, and are called by many different labels, many, many. Some people say Akasha, Sunyata, all that stuff. We say Buddha nature, divine wisdom, Mahaprasha, oh, all that, okay? So this unity or oneness is, so, is the so-called mysterious and mystical. That's what Tong Wei Zi Xuan. Wei, in this case, you can see it's label called or known as, known as, okay? Zi Xuan, it's just something that's so marvelous, so mystical, so indescribable, actually. You can say that, okay? Tong, that's the both. In this case, this Tong means both. Okay, or just oneness together, right? They're together. Tong means together. Okay, so it's similar to this Buddhist concept of what? This. Get it? Ji zhao tong shi, ji yong zan ran. Same thing. Okay, it's very similar. That's what Buddha said this. Okay, uh, 27 years later, or, or so many years later. All right, okay, same idea. Okay, now the last sentence. Uh, Xuan zi yo xuan, zong, right? Zong miao zi men, right? Okay, all right. So it says both emptiness and obvious. Xuan means deeply, profoundly, marvelously, indescribably mysterious. Okay? I.e. marvelous, mystical, and profound. Okay? So the oneness of this essence and function is, for example, Buddha nature exists, but it's also formless. Okay? It's emptiness. Okay? But both are concomitant concomitant of one entity simultaneous. Hence, it is so marvelous, mystical, and profound. We can't uh, describe it completely. Maybe that's a better term. Okay? All right? All right? So both emptiness and existence opens the door to all marvels. Okay? So this zong means, it could mean all. It means all. Or every, all, everything, all, right? All Marvels, marvelous mysteries. It's the door of everything, of all marvels, i.e., what? It gives rise to everything that is either inconceivable and conceivable. All right? Something that's all inconceivable. That's something that we cannot even describe. A and also things that we can describe. Make sense? Okay? Or, or you can say intangible, tangible, abstract, tangible, or metaphysical and physical, or, you know, you know, you can use all those dualities, if you will. Okay? All right? So it's what? Similar to what? In, it's the Tathata. Get it? Tathata? What's Tathata means? It, it, the, the, tra the, the Chinese translation is Lu Si. Okay? Or we say thusness and suchness. So, so think about it. In all, when I know, in most of Buddha's scriptures, right? So long, right? You know, Buddha sutras, sorry, scripture sutras. Okay, sutras. What are the first two words that Ananda, right, when he recited or, you know, right, recited from memory uh, a, a Buddhist uh, scripture? Diamond Sutra, for example. What are the first two words? Lu Si, then Wo Wen, okay. I heard, right, I heard, okay. It's always Lu Si. So if you understand this Tathata, this Dasna, Suchness, You are one. You are one. You are one with all. Or, or another way of saying this, <laughs> using the, I, I didn't put it in here. What Lao Tzu is also saying, that's why it's, so, it's considered so marvelous, right? So, 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 so indescribable or so mysterious. Mystery of mysteries, right? It's what? One is all. Sorry. One is one. One is all. All. One is one. One is all, all is one, and all is all. That's from where? Avantasaka Sutra. I, I didn't put it down because that goes too deep. That's what it is, okay? So it's so mysterious. So it's everything is that one, get it? And yet that one is, gives rise to everything, get it? Ooh, so it both goes both ways, <laughs> make sense? So that's what's complete. So that's the Tao, that's the 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 marvelous profoundness 
or subtle, uh, you can say, yeah, yeah, subtle mystical, mystic, <laughs> mysticalness of this Tao. Make sense? So that's what he was talking about. Okay. Yes. Okay, so Lu Shi Wo Wen, right? Yeah. Buddha, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That, that, no, no. That, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. Because, yeah, because uh, in the Nirvana, uh, before the Nirvana Sutra, uh, you know that before Buddha's Pari Nirvana, right? That's before he left this world. We say, quote unquote, left. You know, he gave four four instructions based on uh, Ananda's four questions. Remember. Okay, so, so, so Buddha instructed Ananda to say, you know, before all my sutras, you should use those four terms, i.e. Lu si or tathat or thus have I heard. That, that's, that's the English translation, which doesn't really capture it. You know what I'm trying to say? Thus I, okay, I mean, thus have. You know, what the heck is thus have? It's, it's really, if you want to get into, it's, sorry, it's deeper meaning, it's true meaning, it's thusness, suchness, okay, which is what? The oneness, you can say the oneness for simplicity's sake. But even then that's too profound for a lot of people. <laughs> okay? So 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 it's very profound. So so now so so okay, this is the last sentence okay of Lao Tzu. So if we truly, truly understand this very first chapter, particularly this you know, this you can say this last last line, if you will, then actually we will understand what the true Dharma is the Dharma that is it's, it's no Dharma the Dharma that is not a Dharma <laughs> yeah it's, 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 it sounds all paradoxical but that's what it is so in all the f next 80 chapters right of of, 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 uh, of the classic uh, 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 Lao Tzu just goes into details describing at least the first 37 chapters to chapter 37 or yeah about what the Tao is the nature of the Tao the you can say the qualities you know its qualities its 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 traits if you will of the Tao okay of this one of this marvelous you know thing of the marvelous heavens and then the next uh, what's what's 38 to 81 I don't know that's like 50 chapters 50 uh, 40, 47, uh, 40, 40, 40, uh, 44 chapters. It's talking about its application, okay? Into detail. He, he goes into more detail, a little bit more detail, okay? You can say at a more, not as much in an abstract level. Get it? So the first chapter is probably the most most abstract second too second is pretty abstract too but 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 the first first this first one is probably the most most abstract okay so you can say it's the highest highest level make sense so just like if we understand what Ru Si means in Buddhist sutras then you really understand everything okay and because the rest is all details you can say details Buddha would be describing to either Shibuti or his his other disciples Mahakasyapa etc or or, or uh, Sariputra about oh you know how how marvelous this essence is or you know how marvelous this true Dharma is you know stuff like that okay all right so 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 that's why uh, we have to study what the Buddha nature means. So we don't look, uh, read these, in this case, the, the, the classic just superficially. Make sense? All right? We have to read it from, you can say, from our essence. Maybe that, that's a, a better way of saying I.e., same thing with all Buddhist scriptures. And actually in Confucius four books also. Okay? All right? Because there's a huge difference in uh, understanding between reading it from the Buddha nature perspective, if you will, okay, versus from a human intellectual perspective. Make sense? Okay, so that's why this first chapter is probably, you can say it's the key, it's the, it's the, it's the foundation, if you will, key of learning or, or understanding, maybe that's a better term, of all 
in this case, in, this, in our case, it would be uh, the rest of the 80 chapters of, 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 of the classic. Or, if you want to put it more broadly, i.e. of all Buddhist scriptures, you can say that, or sutras, and of the Confucian classics also. Okay? All right. Uh, there are many things that I haven't said for some, but uh, uh, I kind of rushed to it, but uh, uh, I, I ask for Lao Tzu's forgiveness and the Buddhists and saints understanding and forgiveness. So, thank you very much. <laughs>